I'm Ellen Besner of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Did you know the World Championship of Magic was held just recently in Quebec City? And among the 3,000 of the world's top magicians who were there for the gathering were two Canadian Jewish performers from Toronto. Ben Train and Jonah Babbins are the founders of the Toronto Magic Company. And while no Canadians took top honors, the local boys learned a lot of new tricks. Okay, pardon the pun. You might have seen the Canadian magicians at Yuck Yucks or at Jewish summer camps or corporate events, but during the pandemic, they pivoted from in-person shows to virtual ones, and they got a lot of media attention. I'm on vacation for another few days, so we're bringing you this encore presentation of my interview with Jonah Babbins and Ben Train about the Jewish roots of magic. Ben's taking a photo. I've never done a show before where one of the audience members was a legit hot belly pig. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, Marianne, you'll have to let us know. That's what it sounded like recently when Toronto magicians Ben Train and Jonah Babbins were doing a live show for clients over Zoom. And one of the guests brought her pet pig onto the screen. But usually the laughter goes the other way, with Train and Babbins making their audiences laugh and mostly blowing their minds with their sleight-of-hand card tricks and comedic mentalist performances. The duo founded the Toronto Magic Company. Babbins got his start in showbiz after graduating with a math degree from Queen's University. He did the Jewish summer camp circuit for a while, and then met with Ben Train, who'd been working as a magician for years around North America. When the pandemic forced the cancellation of all their live shows in person, they pivoted and started doing their magic online. Two years in, it's getting them noticed, including an endorsement from Seth Rogen. And they've just returned from Las Vegas, where they met with some of their magician idols, including Mac King and David Copperfield. There's obviously a ton of Judaism in our journey, in the way we talk. The most and- Jewish part, I would say, of the show is the fact that Uh, both Jonah and I went to university for many, many years and then chose to disappoint our parents by going into the arts. That's right. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Thursday, February the 17th, 2022. Welcome to the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Although Jonah Babbins started doing magic when he was a little kid, he comes by being a professional magician, honestly. And I know this because I went to school with his father and his uncle, and they were the funniest kids in my grade. Aside from the magic shows, Babbins does a magic podcast, he's a magic coach, and he won the Alan Slade Award for being a Canadian rising star. He's been profiled in multiple media outlets for being a successful millennial making six figures in revenue during the pandemic, and he's not even 30 yet. Ben Train is a decade older. He does instructional videos and lectures and his own solo career as well. With COVID capacity restrictions being eased now, they're hosting their first in-person show of 2022 next week at the iconic Yuck Yucks Club in Toronto. Coming up, we'll meet the founders of the Toronto Magic Company. And joining me now from their studio in Toronto, from where they do their live online shows, are Ben Train and Jonah Babbins. Welcome to the CJN Daily, guys. Thank oh, you for so having us. So good to be here. Is there anything Jewish that you do in your act or any Jewish uh, routines that you do? Or we fought a chutzpah. Yeah, in the middle of the show, Moshe the comes out. and he. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You know, here, here's the truth. We bring 10 people up near the end of the show to form a minion. And we do do Marev. Uh, <laughs> but it's only because it's late. It's yeah, very late. that's the late show. No, here, here's the truth. You know, it's funny. In our current act right now, we have a joke in our show which uses matzah and uses a bowl of matzah. Like, I have little pieces of matzah that are still from my cupboard and you know if you're jewish for those who don't know what matzah is matzah is stale crackers that sit in the back of your closet and it never goes good they're not even tam tams they're actual real matzah right the you real matzah. Them real matzah. it's actual matzah shmura matzah no it's not shmura matzah no the real the reason real why it's matzah is because every every um every like pesach our parents bring us matzah and we eat salads instead so then at the end of the year we have a big box of matzah like i'm sure everybody does at the end of Pesach, they've got four in the back of their cupboard. So one day when I was trying to do the trick with crackers, I was looking, looking, looking. I said, I have 2,000 pieces of matzah. You know, like, we'll just start using those for, for the trick. But the truth is, is, you know, I learned a long time ago that when I speak, 
people know I'm Jewish. <laughs> you know, people know, and I, I, I'm just being honest, the way I speak, the rhythm. because he way... swears in Hebrew. No, 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 no. Um, the, the way I speak, the rhythm, the timing, all of that, you know, it's, it, it, it is very Jewish. And to be honest, we have a lot of people in our communities, Ben and I, when we slowly got into magic, a lot of the ways we did it, a lot of the events that were the first events that we got to be a part of are Jewish events and Jewish communities. You know, the amount of Hanukkah parties, you know, the first things that I did were Jewish summer camps. I went on tour Jewish summer camps for years. You know, I would email different uh, synagogues every year and say, hey, I'm available, you know, for events. So now we do a lot of corporate stuff. Now we, we don't necessarily, a lot of like our act is not Jewish related humor. And I think but... that's pretty Jewish related because we switched to the higher paying, better corporate work. Oh my goodness. For for us, the it's I almost feel like Spinoza in certain ways where not necessarily, they were more connected with the world than they were with the, the above, you know, it's the physical plane. And our focus is about reminding people that the world is filled with incredible, wonderful, magical moments. Even if that's not necessarily miracles, you know, seeing a friend that you haven't seen in a decade after you were thinking about them the night before is a magical sensation. You know, looking, getting a coin in your change and it's a really cool collectible coin that you've been looking for is a magical moment. And our show is filled with like, the world is filled with incredible things. You may have forgotten to be aware of how wonderful the world can be because mm -hmm. we're always on our phones. The show is a break from reality to remember that yeah. this world is filled with incredible and, things. And That's depending on who's watching it, you know, what's nice about magic is, you know, you don't say that this trick represents this, you know, go to this trick represents that. What happens is you perform magic and people take from it what they, what it's they want. It's a mirror. It reflects what exactly. Put into so it. if somebody comes to the show and they're thinking about their Jewish values and they're thinking about that, you know, what's important to them, what's on their mind, what they're going to see in the show is going to reflect those things. Oh, maybe this is so fun. Maybe I need to remember to go spend some more fun time with my family. I'm so looking forward to Hanukkah. You know, that makes sense to somebody else who's not thinking that they can say, Oh, that's so fun. Let's keep drinking, you know, or whatever. Theologians no, so love our work well let's get into that topic because i want to bring up some of the historical legacy um houdini yes. david blaine david copperfield etc even moses's staff i read a story that 20 to 30 percent of magicians are jewish were any of these at all I mean, did you study any of these do they influence you in somehow uh in Absolutely. your in inform in your journey the people you're naming david copperfield you know you know houdini like these are these are obviously incredibly famous magicians and they've played a huge role in our life and exactly what you said you know it's funny there is a lot of overlap between magic and judaism over and over again um and we see it all the time and and yes these people obviously had big influence you know what us. i would i mean like when we talk about Houdini, the reason that Houdini became the most popular entertainer of his time wasn't just that he was a, a good magician or performer. It's that, like you were saying, the, the things that his performances symbolized the were powerful. at the time. You know, it was this man who was a five foot four immigrant uh, of Jewish descent, who was the son of a rabbi, who was shackled and constrained by Russian government or, you know, the U.S. police or whatever it was, and he would free himself from oppression and from the shackles of oppression. And so the, the, the symbolism, the metaphor was very powerful, especially during the period in which he was performing, World War I. And the same is true, David Copperfield and David Blaine. And I would say if I were to connect the reason that you see so many Jews in magic, and there is a, a high number of Jewish people in magic, well, I think that one is that Judaism encourages pe people to get into the arts. It encourages intellectual pursuits and That's... magic is at its core, an art that is also engineering and science. Yes. And so it's very much uh, um, it rewards intellectual pursuits and artistic pursuits. It's also a selfless act uh, in many ways. You can charge obviously for a work, but at its core, again, it's about sharing wonder and joy. Um, and those are very Jewish things. And also, truthfully, I think a, a big part of it is skepticism. I think that, you know, I, I studied Jewish philosophy when I was in university and we, it's very important in philosophy and in Jewish thought to be skeptical about the world around you and about the things that are happening. And when Hollywood was formed, it was one of the few industries that let Jews and immigrants in.
Is there any kind of magic you don't do anymore or isn't cool because of the way we live now? The most obvious example that comes to our mind that was very prevalent at one point was what they called oriental magic. So it was white men who dressed up and, well, you wanted to present you your magic as being different and being mysterious. From a faraway land. So you would say he comes from the Orient and here is magic from the West, from the East and it is... And some guy dresses up in a way that he shouldn't. Yep. Our general sense as human beings does a better job, you know, in, in preventing us from, you know, doing weird old things that are, you know, racially insensitive or, or you know, you know, we sexist want, or things like that more than, more than, yeah, just, we want our, our shows to be inclusive and welcoming. We want, it's better for us financially. It's better for us as a community. It's better for us as an art form. If people can come and feel welcome and, you know, not to say that we can't push certain boundaries or push certain buttons, but we want to be very conscious of it. So like if we make a political statement in a show, we are aware that if we do such a thing, it's going to polarize the audience and we have to make that decision. So for instance, I'll tell you, you were asking about Jewish events. I'll tell you um, something that I find personally problematic at some of the events that I'm doing. Um, I will have someone who will call and they'll say, we want you to come and perform uh, for our private school. And um, we don't want you to mention anything that has to do with pop culture, social events, anything that's in the news, anything. And I, I half jokingly say, wow, it sounds like you're really keeping them sheltered. And they laugh and say, we are. And I say, that is interesting. I am not the right entertainer for you because I think it is my job to get people to think about the world that they're in and interact with the world and see mm. it in positive and other things. And so, so, so to answer the question of like, how do we mention these things in shows? It's the same way that you mention things in conversations, right? If you're in Florida and you start yelling about Trump being the worst and people start looking at you horribly, well, then you're going to learn about how you want to talk and what things you want to express in the way that you talk to people in your regular everyday life. Right, you want to be, make a living too. So that's yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I hear yeah. you. When I, I perform at Yuck Yucks, I say the F word. When I perform at synagogues, I don't. Correct. Yeah. Cool. All right, we only have a few minutes left. How did you get Seth Rogen to endorse you? I was at a bar and he was there. So I went up to him and I said, hey, dude, I love your stuff. Can I show you some magic? He said, yeah. I showed him. He loved it. And he, he said some really nice things about me. And if there's any kids or people listening, this is, or even adults, magic is a cool hobby because no matter where you go, meeting new yeah. clients, new people, you got a trick. The last thing I want to ask you is this, uh, which would you rather, Harry Potter or The Prestige and why? Each Harry of you. Potter. Yeah, Harry Potter. Um, why is my life is magic and I benefit from things and people understanding this common language of magic. Anything that's in pop culture that makes you want to talk about magic makes me more excited and I have more things to do. And more people love Harry Potter. That's their deepest connection to magic. They love magic because of Harry Potter and nobody loves magic because of the prestige. There are moments where you literally gasp out loud. I went to Camp Kadima and one summer, uh, I think it was when the fifth Harry Potter book came out, so many kids got it shipped. Everyone to had it and they just went in their own we, corners they, reading We it. had a whole day off where people got to say, like, it was like a sick day. So we had activities, but kids were allowed to skip all activities that day to read Harry Potter. And when you talk about magic, like, Prestige is cool, but Prestige doesn't shut down a magic camp where every kid wants to skip swim and sports to read a book. That book series totally. was amazing. <laughs> And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode and this week of the CJN Daily. Sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality, and customer care. 